like in, in the time frame available, like in the next year or two years, will there be lithium in the form that, um, that, that Tesla needs, which is lithium hydroxide, um, in sufficient quantities at a price that is reasonable and does not materially affect the cost of the Model 3? Tesla is considering constructing a second factory in Texas, but it will be a facility for refining battery-grade lithium. So how big will this factory be? And when will it officially start construction? Also, how much could Tesla get in tax incentives? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing, if you haven't already, and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. In an effort to secure a steady supply of battery components amid surging EV demand, Tesla is looking to establish a lithium refinery on the Gulf Coast of Texas, the first of its kind in North America as well as facilities to support other types of battery materials processing, refining, and manufacturing, and ancillary manufacturing operations in support of Tesla's sustainable product line. Tesla will process raw ore material into a usable state for battery production. The process Tesla will use is innovative and designed to consume fewer hazardous reagents and create usable byproducts compared to the conventional process. The final product, which is battery-grade lithium hydroxide, will be packaged and shipped by truck and rail to various Tesla battery manufacturing sites, supporting the necessary supply chain for large-scale and electric vehicle batteries. According to data from the Global Energy Report, the world produced about 86,300 tons of lithium, of which China contributed 14,000 tons, Chile produced 20,600 tons, and Australia contributed 14,000 tons. The combined production of these three countries accounts for more than 56% of the world's production. In contrast, although the United States has the fifth largest lithium reserves in the world, it only contributed about 900 tons of lithium in 2020, which is equivalent to 0.1%. With this lithium refining facility, Tesla promises to contribute 15,000 tons to not be dependent on Chinese supply and to achieve its audacious goal of selling 20 million electric vehicles by 2030. According to some leaked information, the new battery-grade lithium refining facility is worth 4.8 billion US dollars and requires a site two miles long and one mile wide to develop state-of-the-art machinery for lithium refining. It will provide lithium to the Giga Texas factory first, which is now ramping up production of new 4680 cells using dry coat electro technology for Model Y, Cybertruck, and Tesla Semi. This facilitates an earlier launch of new products in 2023. In its Texas filing, it said the lithium project could be located anywhere with access to the Gulf Coast shipping channel. Tesla will also surely be evaluating weather factors as hurricanes are not infrequent along the U.S. Gulf Coast. Tesla is targeting the La Paloma Lost Creek area southwest of Robstown city limits for its proposed refining facility, where Tesla has filed for a property tax exemption. Robstown is less than 20 miles from the port of Corpus Christi and less than 200 miles by vehicle from the existing Austin area factories. The exact location will be south of the South Texas city of Robstown on US Highway 77 and County Road 28. This area is part of the Robstown ISD School District. If this site is selected, the facility would take about two years to build with commercial production targeted by the end of 2024. Tesla is prepared to invest $365 million into this facility through 2024 and ultimately hire 162 full-time workers by 2025. The biggest e-fee manufacturer is also going to hire 250 temporary construction workers to build the facility at an average salary of $52,500 a year. But then, who will be Tesla's raw lithium supplier? In spring of 2022, the company reportedly signed two significant contracts with Australian mining operators. Specifically, the lithium spodamine concentrate comes from Core and Liontown Resources. In addition, Tesla purchases lithium hydroxide from Ganfeng. As reported, a contract with Piedmont Lithium in the US is still on hold. Recently, Tesla has been secretly collaborating with another supplier, Sigma Lithium. The company's volume was nearly four times its average. Upon closer inspection, this jolt in Sigma Lithium's share price seems to relate to news about Tesla entering the refining space. 
Back in 2019, Sigma Lithium's CEO announced that the company had held discussions with Tesla about supplying lithium. He also added that Sigma Lithium would directly supply Tesla's plants, and Sigma Lithium is well positioned to do that if Tesla continues refining its lithium hydroxide. They have committed to producing lithium concentrate, which is the input needed for further refining. But there is still much uncertainty remaining, and this is all highly speculative. And given the requirements stipulated in the recent U.S. Inflation Reduction Act based on percent of a battery's mineral value, refining lithium into lithium hydroxide will likely qualify Tesla's batteries for tax credits of $7,500 even if it supplies some of the raw lithium from non-qualifying countries. So then how much could Tesla get in tax incentives for this facility? In the application, Tesla is vying for tax breaks from the Robstown Independent School District. Whether the district grants Tesla the tax breaks will be critical during the company's location selection process. The lack of these tax breaks would make citing the project in Texas less attractive due to the current economic environment. If the application is approved, Tesla is expected to get nearly $16.2 million in property tax relief over the next 10 years, including about $2.5 million in 2025 when the tax relief starts. The Robstown Independent School District filed the tax relief application, called Chapter 313. This Texas tax law allows a school district to offer property tax relief for up to 10 years. Tesla wants to cap the appraised value of its facility at $20 million even though it expects the property to be worth $254 million in 2025. Even if the property taxes are capped at $20 million, that could still be a windfall for Robstown ISD and Nueces County. Currently, the property on that piece of land is valued at less than $280,000. In its application, Robstown ISD said it expects the school board to finalize the agreement in December. Tesla footed the school district's $115,000 application fee, which is standard practice. Nueces County is also expected to reach a similar deal with Tesla to provide tax breaks. For Tesla, having its own source of battery-grade lithium would be a positive for it and its investors. This would give it a better control over its supply chain and lessen the probability that its business would be hurt by a global shortage of this critical battery material. Along with the benefit of availability, it's also possible that Tesla could reap a cost benefit, at least in the future anyway. Nowadays, more and more new types of batteries are born with high energy density, longer lifespan, and faster charging ability such as nano diamond batteries, lithium sulfur batteries, and graphene aluminum ion batteries. However, scientists have found a new material that is stronger and can replace these batteries. This material is called borophene. So what makes borophene superior? Scientists first predicted borophene's existence in the 1990s, but this exotic substance wasn't synthesized until 2015, using chemical vapor deposition. Borophene is defined as a crystalline atomic monolayer of boron. The atom's hexagonal structure is highly similar to that of graphene carbon atoms, except they are boron atoms with an extra boron atom in the center of each hexagon. The appearance of borophene has caught the attention of electric vehicle manufacturers, including Tesla. Previously in an interview, Elon Musk shared that borophene will be a potential material in the future for the electric vehicle battery industry. Borophene is truly a material of tremendous strength. It could overtake graphene, a material used in current fast charging batteries. Battery researchers say that borophene, with its outstanding properties over graphene, could also be the material for a battery that charges about 80 times faster than a lithium-ion battery, equivalent to a charging time of just under 3 minutes. Meanwhile, graphene-aluminum-ion batteries containing graphene are supposed to charge 60 times faster than current lithium-ion batteries. Particularly, some research indicates the electron density of borophene is higher than graphene, hence if cooled, borophene could become a material that conducts electrical charges with zero resistance. Next, borophene is lightweight and fairly reactive, making it a promising candidate for storing metal ions in batteries. Scientists say that 
that borophene is a promising anode material for lithium, sodium, and magnesium ion batteries due to high theoretical specific capacities, excellent electronic conductivity, and outstanding ion transport properties. Most recently, a scientific journal by Chinese scientists published the theoretical storage capacity of monolayer honeycomb borophene, or H borophene as an anode material for the lithium ion battery and sodium ion batteries. Accordingly, the maximum theoretical storage capacity of H borophene is this many for sodium ion batteries and up to this much for lithium ion batteries. The latter is more than 14 times higher than that of commercially used graphite with this much and is also the highest theoretical capacity among all the 2D materials for the lithium ion battery discovered to date. This study suggests that H borophene is a promising anode material for high capacity lithium ion batteries and sodium ion batteries. Next, as per some sources, the production cost of borophene is still high, but maybe slightly cheaper than the cost of producing graphene. Graphene has a very high cost of production with a single flake of graphene just one micron in size, costing over $1,000, thus placing it among the most expensive materials on the planet. The estimated price of a piece of borophene ranges from 700 to 750 US dollars. Not only that, chemists have shown that borophene has superior properties compared to graphene. Borophene is superconductive, making it excellent for electricity and heat dissipation. It's also safer than other materials. Its unique crystalline structure formed by boron atoms is responsible for its properties, as the void that remains between the atoms allows boron to be superconducting. Borophene can also catalyze the decomposition of molecular hydrogen into hydrogen ions and water into hydrogen and oxygen ions. This is one of its many advantages. A research team at the University of Xiamen, China, said borophene has excellent catalytic effects in the hydrogen evolution reaction, the oxygen reduction reaction, the oxygen evolution reaction, and the carbon dioxide electro reduction reaction. This may usher in a new era of water-based power cycles. Moreover, theoretical studies suggest borophene can store more than 15% of its weight in hydrogen, significantly outperforming other materials due to its absorptive property and large surface area of atomic layers. The flexibility of borophene is far above that of graphene and has been reported as being at a record high. Its ideal strength surpasses the best of all known polymer materials so far. It also has a higher stiffness to weight ratio than graphene. Nonetheless, borophene still has some limitations. Specifically, scientists must conduct intensive research before borophene may be used extensively. For instance, they have yet to discover a means to produce large-scale borophene. Because of the material's reactivity, it is susceptible to oxidation and must be carefully protected. This will be a major barrier that needs to be broken before borophene can be used in battery production. Meanwhile, the price of other materials for the production of electric vehicle batteries is still much cheaper than borophene or graphene. For example, prices for lithium for lithium-ion battery production are currently at around $35 per kilogram in Asia. On the other hand, despite the disadvantages of borophene, famous battery manufacturers such as CATL, Storedot, and BYD have noticed this material because of its superior properties, promising to create a new type of superfast charging battery based on borophene. Storedot was confident that they can produce batteries that can be fully charged in below 5 minutes in the future. Doron Meyersdorf, CEO of Storedot, shared, The number one barrier to the adoption of electric vehicles is no longer cost, it's range anxiety. You're either afraid that you're going to get stuck on the highway or you're going to need to sit in a charging station for two hours. But if the experience of the driver is exactly like fueling a petrol car, this whole anxiety goes away. We're trying to find a material that might be feasible in the production of extreme fast charging batteries, and borophene is a good candidate, he added. Eventually, will Tesla use borophene as a new material for the anode production for Tesla's 4680 batteries? Currently, Tesla doesn't intend to use borophene for their 4680 battery technology yet because the borophene production cost is still high. However, Elon Musk has formed a Tesla battery research team that is spearheading the progress of Tesla's new battery, led by Jeff Don, one of the pioneering developers of the original lithium-ion battery. Don has recently been working on the next generation battery technology that he expects will eventually overtake lithium-ion batteries as the most useful cell composition. 
While there has been plenty of hype around solid-state batteries, Jeff Don believes that the future of batteries is going to be a completely different battery cell, lithium metal and anode-free batteries. For further clarification, lithium metal and anode-free are not two different batteries. Rather, this is one type of battery named lithium metal and anode-free. Tesla explains these hurdles in lithium metal battery patents, stating that challenges with lithium metal and anode-free lithium batteries have prevented their widespread adoption. By testing unconventional tactics, Jeff Don was able to beat the general limit in the battery industry. By using a new electrolyte, Don's team created systems that exhibited improved capacity retention. This battery is more energy dense, is less expensive, and is easier to assemble due to its lack of anode coating. While Jeff Don still hasn't released any numbers on the energy density, recent tests, not done by Tesla on the lithium metal and anode-free technology, were able to achieve an energy density of 2600 watt-hours per kilogram. Current advanced batteries have made great improvement on performance, but have done so by compromising on cost, reliability, and safety. The battery, a great invention that powers most of the modern world. Researchers are putting a lot of effort into developing dual carbon batteries that have a lifespan of hundreds of years and can completely replace lithium batteries. So how will dual carbon batteries work? In the time frame available, like in the next year or two years, will there be lithium in the form that, that, that Tesla needs, which is lithium hydroxide, um, in sufficient quantities at a price that is reasonable and does not materially affect the cost of the Model 3. Lithium-ion technology has truly revolutionized the energy storage industry. First discovered by American chemist Gilbert Lewis in 1912, lithium-ion technology has since come to dominate the battery market with the global lithium-ion market valued at $53.6 billion in 2020 and expecting to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 19% from 2020 to 2028. In fact, the device you're using to watch our videos could be using a lithium-ion battery, just like the Model 3 electric car. It can be said that lithium-ion is considered the best battery of today. However, demand will likely soon outstrip supply, and projections of the Earth's total lithium stores indicate that the resource may soon be depleted as early as 2040. Moreover, they are not without downsides, requiring expensive cathode and anode materials in the form of cobalt, nickel, manganese, and aluminum. They are also unstable in some environments, namely when overheated or when the internal battery is exposed to water or air. They have been known to cause dramatic exothermic reactions, which led airlines to ban batteries with more than 160 watt-hours from being carried onto flights as personal baggage. Similarly, lithium-ion batteries must be kept within careful charging and discharging cycles and voltages, lest they degrade or combust. Thus, the dual-carbon battery was born. What I am holding here is a dual-carbon battery researched in my laboratory at Kyushu University and produced by Power Japan Plus. It is a completely unique design that with properties unlike any batteries ever made. Dual carbon battery technology could be the key to turning around the entire US EV market. This new battery makes use of a unique chemistry, with both the anode and the cathode made of carbon. It has a comparable energy density to lithium ion, but is far superior in terms of longevity, safety, charging time, price, and environmental sustainability. Lithium-ion batteries have a set lifespan of 2,000 to 3,000 cycles and will slowly deteriorate over time, even when not in use. Current models are expected to last 10 to 20 years in the right temperature conditions. On the other hand, in testing, the dual carbon cell has completed more than 3,000 charge-slash-discharge cycles with virtually no performance degradation, meaning that it could conceivably last the lifetime of a car. Scientists at Power Japan Plus Company are working on developing a dual carbon battery with a cycle of up to 4,000 with a predicted life of up to 100 years. 
nine times longer than the 4680 battery being developed at Tesla. The dual carbon battery eliminates the unstable active material used in other high-performance batteries, reducing fire and explosion hazards. It experiences zero temperature change during operation. This not only makes the batteries potentially much safer for long-term use, but removes the need for complex, expensive, and space-consuming battery coolant systems. Furthermore, since they will not short-circuit when totally discharged, they can be run for longer, theoretically extending battery life even more. This battery can be charged and discharged with no damage to the battery. You can safely drive your car everywhere without worrying about battery degradation. The dual carbon battery could give a modern electric vehicle a range of almost 300 miles, which puts it in a class with the highest end battery in Tesla's Model S while the Model 3 can go up to 267 miles on a single charge. A Texas-made Tesla Model Y with the 4680 battery cells has been able to complete a charging session from 0 to 97% in 52 minutes. That's faster than charging my cell phone, which goes from 0 to full battery in an hour and 45 minutes. The dual carbon battery can charge up to 20 times faster than modern lithium ion batteries. That fact alone will make the dual carbon battery of extreme interest to electric vehicle manufacturers as they struggle to keep up with Tesla and its supercharging stations. Dual carbon batteries deliver more than 4 volts of power from a single cell. If you previously charged the car for 6 to 8 hours, now it only takes 30 minutes. You can take a nap and then your car will be fully charged. This saves time when you have an urgent trip. So in terms of cost, is it cheaper than lithium batteries? The battery allows for consolidation of the supply chain with only one active material, carbon. Manufacturing of this battery is under no threat of supply disruption or price spikes from rare metals, rare earths, or heavy metals. Using carbon has numerous benefits, not the least of which is cost. Little is known about the chemistry of the carbon used at both ends of the battery, but we do know that it's developed in-house from organic cotton to obtain greater control over the size of the carbon crystals in its electrodes. So it saves a lot of production cost. And as you know, the 4680 battery costs $132 per kilowatt hour back in 2021. The first generation 4680 battery was down to about $50 to $55 per kilowatt hour. Since dual carbon batteries require essentially a single carbon input material, developing it could cut overall battery costs by as much as 20 to 25 percent while also being environmentally friendly. It's estimated that the dual carbon battery will cost $12.50 per kilowatt hour, which is four times cheaper than Tesla's 4680 lithium battery. But the company's goal is to create a battery cell that is not only competitive with today's lithium ion products, but uses entirely organic input materials that can be fully recycled at the end of their life. Lithium ion batteries are far more materially complex. These complexities pose significant challenges for efficiently recovering materials and processing them for reuse cost effectively. On the other hand, dual carbon batteries are 100% biodegradable and recyclable. This represents a major breakthrough in the field of energy storage. Focusing on sustainable storage is imperative for the future, and solutions are getting cheaper and more sustainable. Famous cars in the world today are mainly powered by two main sources, such as fossil fuels and batteries. Now, more and more new batteries are being researched and launched to increase the range and performance of electric cars, such as nuclear batteries. Scientists have also found a way to help increase the safety of nuclear batteries by using thorium as the material for this battery. Thorium could increase the efficiency of nuclear batteries many times over and is expected to introduce a new era for battery technology. So what makes thorium such a superior component for nuclear batteries? Thorium will usher in a new era of clean, inexpensive, and sustainable energy free from carbon emissions. This is a low radioactive metallic chemical element. Its reactors offer a potentially safer, cleaner, and more affordable alternative to traditional nuclear reactors fueled by highly radioactive materials. The main reactor type that's being explored for thorium is Molten Salt Reactors, or MSR. There are many different types of molten salt reactors, but there is one specific type which is called a liquid fluoride thorium reactor. 
A great benefit of this reactor is that it can self-regulate to maintain its temperature within an optimal and safe range. As the temperature in the reactor goes up, the rate at which the fission reaction occurs goes down. Hence why I've been touting its safety thus far until I'm proven otherwise. It's expected that thorium reactors will have lower operational costs than traditional fission reactors as well. It's due to the fact that these systems operate at low pressure while at a high heat range, which means the containment vessels can be smaller and thinner. Also, these reactors require fewer components for fuel assemblies. They're basically composed of just vats of fuel, making them simpler and cheaper to build. So, how can thorium be implemented into our daily lives? In the past, Tesla's CEO Elon Musk has shared that thorium will be a very potential material for nuclear batteries. Indeed, thorium is much safer compared to uranium. According to experts, it only emits alpha radiation, which is weak enough that it can't penetrate our epidermis, or the outer layer of skin. Scientists have taken advantage of thorium in order to develop a nuclear battery with an extremely long lifespan. This new nuclear battery uses nuclear waste and can last up to 35,000 years. And that's very impressive, especially when you consider the average life of an EV battery is only 10 to 20 years. The power of the nuclear battery comes from radioactive isotopes used in nuclear reactors. In this case, the radioactive isotopes from thorium will power the battery. It can then be used to power devices and machines of any size, from aircraft and rockets to electric vehicles and even smartphones. Not only that, previously, laser power systems based in Connecticut developed a method of propulsion that uses thorium to produce electricity to power a car engine. According to the company, just one gram of thorium produces more energy than 28,000 liters of petrol, which is equivalent to 7,500 gallons of gasoline. They also added that just 8 grams of thorium would be enough to power a vehicle for its entire life. It can even go millions of miles without refueling. Well, goodbye range anxiety. Meanwhile, as per some sources, the average price of regular gasoline in the US is currently at around $4.67 per gallon. Hence, it'll cost about 35,000 US dollars for 7,500 gallons of gas. The price of one gram of thorium is only $275.48, so the cost of one gram of thorium is 127 times cheaper. In addition to that, thorium reserves are vast. It is three to four times more abundant than uranium in the Earth's crust and widely distributed in nature as an easily exploitable resource in many countries. Experts estimate that there is enough thorium in the United States alone to power the country at its current energy level for over a thousand years. In fact, according to the data from the United States Geological Survey and the International Atomic Energy Agency, the largest thorium reserves in the world are found in India, which has around 25% of the world reserves, which is currently estimated at 519,000 tons, while Australia has 489,000 tons, representing 19%. Also, the United States has the third largest reserves in the world, which is estimated to be at about 400,000 tons, or 13%. Therefore, battery manufacturers and EV manufacturers will pay close attention to thorium, especially Tesla, as the American EV manufacturer is still looking for ways to reduce its dependence on the supply chain from China. Indeed, within the context of a shortage of certain raw materials to produce electric vehicle batteries, thorium is considered an effective solution. On top of that, designs for thorium field vehicles have been announced and the public hopes they will appear in reality in the future. Why, back in 2009, Lauren Kulesis, a designer specializing in automotive branding, presented the Cadillac Word thorium fuel concept. The concept car is designed to last 100 years without any basic maintenance. It just takes thorium-based fuel to operate. Kulesis said apart from adjusting the Cadillac Word thorium fuel's 24 tires, which are basically four groupings of six mini wheels powered by four induction motors every five years, not one element of the vehicle would need to be added or subtracted in its estimated lifespan. In addition, Norway-based marine group Olstein has introduced Thor, its concept design for a 149 meter or 489 feet replenishment, research, and rescue ship powered by a thorium molten salt reactor that can be used to recharge battery-driven cruise ships at sea. 
As environmental consciousness grows, ecotourism has become a booming business, but with the desire to visit exotic environments comes the need to protect these often under threat locations. This is particularly urgent for cruise ships going into the polar regions, which are notoriously fragile. To overcome this, the Olstein Group is looking to the multi-purpose Thor, which would not only be able to operate in polar seas to carry out research and rescue missions independent of refueling, but could also recharge the next generation of electrically propelled cruise ships. Since Thor is designed to recharge these future cruise ships, Olstein is also working on the SIF concept ship, which is a 100 meter or 330 foot 80 passenger ship that could be recharged at sea by the nuclear powered Thor. Talk about all mighty. So, will thorium be widely used in the automotive industry in the future? Unfortunately, it's still too early to tell whether we'll be driving around in thorium powered cars in the future or some other new spectacular battery concept vehicle. The car buying public like you and I would have to be educated as to the benefits and safety of such a system to overcome any doubts they might have about radioactive fuel under the hood. Alas, thorium also had a lot of technical problems to overcome before it was officially put into mass use. Previously, billions of dollars had been invested in the research and development of technologies based on nuclear fuel. However, recently, scientists have stepped up the research process for thorium. Meanwhile, China is taking a revolutionary approach with the invention of a new generation in reactor technology. The country's scientists claim that this type of reactor will allow them to use thorium fuel with much greater care than conventional uranium fuel. This, along with those to come, will be one of the big steps that help our world edge closer to commercializing thorium. And that's the end of today's episode. We sincerely thank you for watching today's video and for all of your support of our channel, Tesla Car World. As always, if you enjoyed our video, please leave a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs. And be sure to leave a comment down below to tell us what you think about today's content. Once again, we thank you so much. From all of us here, we hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care and be safe.